Hey, Pin Dude here. Welcome back to My Vintage Pinball. This episode is Pinball Restoration Update 1990 Williams Roller Games Part Number 7, and it is the start of Playfield Restoration. Uh, hopefully, in this episode, we will get the Playfield completely stripped top and bottom. Uh, that is the plan, anyway. Uh, hopefully, I'll have enough time to get it done. But uh, the cabinet is done. If you saw parts one through six and a half, uh, they were all on doing the lower cabinet, the uh, upper cabinet, the head, uh, all the wiring and, and electronics inside the cabinet and the head. And in the last episode, episode six and a half, we actually booted up the game, uh, saw that the, that the uh, display was not in very good shape, and we put a brand new NOS display assembly in the game. So the game is completely working. We tested the sound, sound works, music works, display works, game boots no problem, all good to go. So uh, I cleaned the garage a little bit and I reconfigured the front of the garage here to get the play field ready to go. So let me give you a quick little tour of how I go about uh, stripping my play fields. I've covered this before in uh, some of my really old videos and a little bit in my workshop tour earlier this year. Uh, so I'll just kind of go quickly over uh, what I use and how I go about stripping this. Uh, so once again, Williams Roller Games, Pinball Restoration Update, part number seven. Let's get started. All right, so we'll start at the back of the garage here. And also the most important tool for doing your uh, pinball playfield restorations. And that is a uh, playfield rotisserie. Now this is a rotisserie that I've covered before. Uh, I built this using some uh, old plans that used to be on RGP, Rec Games Pinball. Uh, but you can also find a lot of these homebrew rotisserie plans on uh, a couple different threads on Pinside. Uh, just search Playfield Rotisserie, you'll find plenty. So this one's just built with uh, 2x4s, uh, a couple plumbing fit-ins, and then a couple pieces of angle iron. And uh, on the wall here... I just have a 2x4 mounted on the wall, bolted into the studs, super solid. Uh, I have that plumbing coupler here and the angle iron. And on the other side, I, I built this uh, kind of uh, T, upside down T, with bracing out of 2x4s. And it, I bolt it directly to my workbench. It's very sturdy. And then I have that coupler that allows me to rotate it and the angle iron. And this, I can pull this off when I'm not using it. These just unscrew and I put these away when I'm not using it so I can still use my workbench as a workbench. And this is fully adjustable by taking two screws out. And on the bottom of the uh, bench here, I kind of have it marked. Uh, I'm currently in the modern solid state area. So this should be the perfect spot for the rotisserie for roller games as it's a modern solid state. This section here is for uh, electromechanical games and early solid state games. Play fields are a little shorter. And then I'm also marked back here for black hole because I did a black hole restoration uh, many years ago. Uh, that play field's a little bit longer. <clears throat> uh, also, my workbench here, um, my workbench actually stops right here. And I didn't have anything here initially. And it was really annoying because I would drop pieces off the bottom of the play field. Uh, and they would fall into the uh, vast pit under there, and I'd have to get on my hands and knees and find and find the part. So I built this little workbench extension using some 2x4s bolted to the workbench and to the wall and put a piece of wood up here. So now I have a completely flat surface, and if anything falls, it'll land on the top here and be easy to find. Uh, so I think that's it. Um, I just use a uh, vice grip to uh, loosen the couplers. So you, you loosen the coupler and then you can rotate the play field and you can lock it, you know, in whatever position you need it to be in. Works real good. And then to uh, clamp the play field on, I just use these uh, C clamps. You can use, uh, you can use this kind of clamp, a quick clamp these are called. I don't particularly like these. They don't grab real good compared to this that you can really crank it down uh, make sure that play field doesn't slip I've never had a play field slip off the rotisserie and I just have a bunch of these cut up pieces uh, little pieces of cardboard uh, and I put them between the play field 
you know, I usually use two of these little corrugated cardboards. Put them on top of the play field so that uh, it, it, it won't mar, the clamp won't mar the play field in any way or dig into the clear coat. <clears throat> also, I have uh, hidden under here, I have, uh, it's just an LED work light. Uh, I kind of rigged it up on the wall there. So it shines a nice uh, bright light on top of the play field here makes it easier to work because uh, I don't have an overhead light here. This corner's a little dark. And then this TV here works out real good. I can put the uh, my before pictures, I can put it on the TV here. Uh, so I'm looking at my before pictures, right, you know, I don't even have to move. I just look up and there's my before pictures when I'm reassembling the play field. Uh, it works out really great. So that's my uh, play field rotisserie workshop area. Uh, I really like it. I, I built this uh, I, probably 12 years ago or so, and uh, I've done uh, quite a few games with it, and it, it works really good, and it was, you know, really cheap to build. I mean, the rotisserie parts are probably $40, a couple hours of time to build it. The workbench was already here anyway, uh, so there's just a close-up of that coupler setup I'm using for my rotisserie. That's the side that's bolted to the wall there. And uh, here's the, uh, the coupler bolted on the uh, removable section, the uh, upside down T. So next to my rotisserie setup here, I have this uh, foldable uh, card table set up with a towel on it. Uh, so as I remove the part off the play field, I put it on the same location that I took it off the play field onto this table. So basically if I remove a plastic from the uh, uh, bottom left corner, I put it on the bottom left of the tables. If I remove something from the bottom right, I put it on the bottom right. So by the time the top of the play field is depopulated, it kind of looks like the play field is now on this table. All the small hardware I put into bags, little sandwich bags and I label the sandwich bag with a Sharpie as to what that part, what those parts go to. Uh, so that way, when I dump the, the metal parts into the tumbler, I just do one bag at a time and then put the parts back in that bag. And there's no confusion later on on where those uh, screws came from. I'll know exactly what location of the play field those screws went on. All right, so I have one of these little plastic three drawer carts that you get at like Walmart in the home section. And I have it labeled as the teardown cart. And what I use this for is for assemblies. Uh, like when I pull off a flipper assembly, you know, the whole thing as an assembly with the bracket and everything, I put it in a bag and then I put it in one of these drawers. Same if I pull a pop bumper assembly off, I just put it in this drawer. And then as I have time, I pull one assembly out at a time I completely rebuild that assembly, put it back in a brand new sandwich bag, put it in a drawer. So by the time I rebuild all the assemblies, they're all organized in this cart, nice and neatly in bags. And when it comes time to put those parts back on the play field, they're in a bag in this cart out of the way where they stay clean and ready to go onto the play field. So here's kind of a wider look at my, uh, my setup here at the uh, front of my garage rotisserie area, the staging area for the, all the parts that come off the play field, uh, my workbench where I'll be rebuilding assemblies and uh, testing things uh, on this workbench. And then my teardown cart is right here. And then over here, I still have the other table that is always in this location. I have this table here and what this table will end up being is as the parts, uh, the, all the dirty parts that are on the other table, as I start to restore those parts, I'll lay those parts out in the appropriate spot on this table so that by the time I am done restoring all the parts, the table over there by the rotisserie will be empty and all the parts will be organized on this table and ready to go onto the play field. All right, so the most important thing before you start tearing apart your play field, the most important thing is to take a lot of pictures. And you're not gonna, just gonna be taking pictures before you start tearing it apart. You're gonna be taking pictures the whole time you're disassembling that play field. Like you're gonna take pictures 
Once you remove a plastic, you want to take a picture of the posts under that plastic so that when you go back to, to put it back together, you know exactly, you know, that post was there, that post was there. So pick, taking pictures is really important. Uh, as the whole time you're taking apart the play field, uh, there's a lot of parts on a play field. It's very easy to be disorganized. And then when you go to put that play field together, you're like, oh my God, where do these parts go? I, I don't remember. So, uh, it, and even if you take a lot of pictures, take more. Uh, I've done this so many times and there's always one picture or two pictures that I'm missing. You know, that somehow I didn't get a picture of that one certain area that I needed. So take a ton of pictures. So to take those pictures, I use a DSLR uh, because I happen to have one. Uh, and the reason I use the DSLR is because it takes very large file size pictures. Uh, you can really zoom in on the uh, large files that you get out of a DSLR camera. They're also very high resolution. They're also very sharp. Uh, so that's why I use the DSLR. I also use a tripod uh, because I want these pictures to be very sharp so that uh, I can see every little detail in the picture. Uh, so really important. And then of course you need uh, somewhere to view those pictures that you, those before pictures you took so you can easily reference them when you're putting the uh, play field back together. So in my garage, I have two ways to view those pictures. I have my uh, PC, which is actually up there on the ceiling, but the monitor is right here at my workbench. I can view the pictures here on, uh, on this monitor. Or, uh, as I explained before, I can uh, throw those onto a, uh, a USB stick and plug them into my TV that's right at my rotisserie station there. Uh, and I can look at the pictures there. So I actually have two ways uh, that I can view my before pictures. All right, so I got my play field out here. First time we've had the roller games play field out here. And this is a packed play field. This play field is heavy, heavy, heavy. Uh, so we want to make sure we get it on the rotisserie good. And there, in its current form, there's not going to be a good way to get it clamped onto the rotisserie with the apron on and all of this upper ramp and diverter assembly. So we want to strip down a little bit of this uh, so that one, so it's lighter and two that, so we have a good secure, secure way to get it on the rotisserie. So I just got done taking a ton of pictures of both the front side and the back side of the play field. Those will be my initial pictures and I will continue to take pictures as I get assemblies off. So I'm just going to start pulling some stuff off and, uh, start getting stuff stripped down. just a little bit of time on uh, this is uh, after work one evening got a lot of the stuff off the top side all the heavy ramps and stuff uh, we're just about ready to be able to put this on the rotisserie but this is all I'm gonna do for the night zoom in here so here's what we're starting with see the play field's got you know a little bit of wear here or there a lot of the key lines the black key lines are missing there's some mylar on the there's only mylar on the upper section that we have to remove I wish there was mylar on this lower section here because it wouldn't have so much wear if it would have had mylar down there so that's uh, day one I guess we'll call it of stripping the play field so here's the parts table after the first uh, night of depopulation of the playfield. Got quite a few stuff off the, off of the playfield, and you see it's organized, you know, kind of the way it was on the playfield. Just helps to uh, keep things neat and organized. 
All right, so it's my second day of uh, stripping the play field down. It's a evening after work, so I don't have a lot of time to work. It's also hot out. I have a couple fans running in the shop here. Uh, it's, I think it's 88 degrees in the shop right now. So a little warm. Got a heat wave starting, gonna be in the mid 90s for the next few days. Uh, but I want to get a little more stripped off this play field. Play field's still really heavy. Uh, so I'm just going to work on it, leaning on the uh, counter here. I bring it in every night with the heat and the humidity. I don't like to leave the play fields out in the garage uh, since I don't have a temperature controlled garage. So my goal for tonight is to get some of the heavy assemblies off so that we can uh, get this play field a little lighter since I'm carting it in and out of the workshop to the game room every time I work on it. So let's start with assemblies. So we'll take this uh, kickback here, it's a coil assembly. The wires are soldered direct. There's no connector that you can take off to get this assembly off. So obviously you want to take your digital camera and take some pictures of that with your camera. But also, I don't want to rely just on the picture because what if, you know, what if I don't check it and it's blurry and I can't see the, you know, I can't see the stripe on the wire. So I want to make sure I get the wires right. So next to my rotisserie up there, I have, I always have that hanging there. There's a clipboard with a whole bunch of paper on it. So what I'll do is I will write down the wire colors. So I take my clipboard here and I already wrote some like I took the upper ramp diverter coil off. Uh, so I wrote the top left terminal is blue with a, with a red stripe and the, uh, the bottom right the other terminal is purple with yellow stripes. So I document it on my clipboard and I'm just going to continue to document on this clipboard where these wire colors are. So for this quill, I'm going to write that it is the left kickback lane. And there is no diode on this quill. A lot of the, on these newer games, the coils, the coil diodes are actually on the, uh, on one of the circuit boards in the back box. So they're not actually on the um, quill itself, like some of the earlier games. Uh, so here I'm going to have to write, you know, left lug, right lug. My picture will also help me with this. Uh, so here I'll do top and bottom since this lug's here and the other lug's down by the play field. So I'll do top lug, bottom lug. Top lug's got a thick purple with a yellow and it also has a thin purple with a yellow. And the bottom wire is a thin, it's really dirty. <laughs> I need to uh, wipe some dirt off and I'm actually going to have to look at the other side of this one. Alright, so it's blue with a yellow stripe. So now I have a good picture of this coil assembly with the wires on it and I also have it documented on my clipboard with paper. So either way, I'm going to know how to hook this up and I'm not going to have to pull the schematic out and, you know, spend all that time. Uh, trying to figure out where the wires go. I, I'll know for sure where they go. All right, so now I'm going to unsolder this. The, the other approach you can take here is just clip the wires and leave a little insulation on the coil, and that way you'll be able to see what wire it was. Uh, I don't do that approach. I easily could because I'm going to clip these wires back in the end anyway to get a nice fresh uh, solder joint. But I don't know. This is just the way I've always done it. Uh, so... I'm just going to unsolder these real quick. And then I'm going to remove the assembly from the play field. All right, so now I got the assembly off. I'm going to put it in a Ziploc bag. And I'm going to take that assembly in the Ziploc bag and put it in my teardown cart. And now when I have time, I will rebuild that assembly. But for now, that gets them all, away, all out of the way. They're sorted. They stay clean. And we can move on to the next assembly.
that's about all I'm going to get done on day two. I probably spent two plus hours working on it and uh, got a, quite a few things off, mostly assemblies on the back uh, to make it a lot lighter. And we got a lot off the top too. It, it's amazing how bad a condition this game was in. The lack of maintenance, uh, the severe dirtiness. My hands are black from, from working on this thing. Uh, but you can't get overwhelmed. Uh, all the stuff is fixable. The broken parts are replaceable. And if you take your time, we'll get this thing together and it'll be just like new. My cart is uh, filling up with assemblies here. Got a bunch of assemblies up here. Some more down here, the drop target bank, and then the uh, three flipper assemblies are down here. And the table is uh, filling up. Uh, just to save some space, I moved the uh, bigger things like the, the, uh, the big upper ramp and stuff to the other table just to make room. So, we'll continue more hopefully tomorrow after work. Hey there, day three, uh, another day after work, so I'm not gonna get a whole heck of a lot done, uh, but we're gonna try to get some stuff done. And to start, uh, we're gonna put this thing on the rotisserie. It's light enough now where I'm not gonna kill myself to get it on there, and it's gonna make things a lot easier. So first I'm gonna make sure my bars are locked and then I'm gonna pick this up, and I tend to always put the flippers uh, towards the bottom of the playfield on this side, top of the playfield on this side. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do and see how this goes. Just making sure I'm not catching anything on the bottom of the play field on my crossbars here. And everything looks good. So we can clamp it down. All right, so I'm just using my uh, C clamps here and a couple pieces of cut up cardboard. And I'm gonna clamp the play field onto my crossbars here. All right, so I, I'm not able to get a good clamp on the back here because of this whole backboard assembly. Uh, so I need to get the backboard assembly off. So I'm going to work on that now. Uh, but playfield's up here, and you can kind of see the height of mine. Uh, it is a little high. Uh, this was dictated by the fact that I have a counter type, a counter height workbench, and then I actually had to raise this workbench up a hair because I have my air compressor under here, and I needed to clear. Uh, the air compressor so it's a little higher than I would have liked but once we get it clamped on you can tilt it towards yourself and it actually makes it <clears throat> the perfect height at that point uh, but if I was to do this again I, I would probably lower this about six inches uh, but like I said I just don't have the clearance unless I move my air compressor somewhere else in the garage and uh, there's really nowhere else to put it so the setup works it could be tweaked a little bit but I'm happy enough with it. All right, so let me get this backboard off and then we'll come back. Okay, I got the uh, backboard and the, uh, the metal guides off. So now I got my clamps on and now we're on the rotisserie for real. So let's uh, loosen these a little bit. All right, so now we can spin the play field. So I was just saying about how the play field's kind of sitting high, but as you see, now that I have it tilted, it's actually at the perfect height uh, for working on it. So it's kind of a compromise. So, you know, if you're gonna set up your rotisserie, just play around with the height before you set anything in stone and see what works best for you. Uh, but this works pretty good. And now, you know, I can flip it completely over and work on the other side. I have my TV set here so it clears. Uh, so there's no obstructions and everything's easy to get to. 
So now that I got it on here, let's uh, continue to strip. All right, so I got another uh, maybe two hours worth of work done tonight, and I'm going to have to quit for the night. Uh, so let me reposition the tripod, and I'll kind of show you where we're at. All right, so there's the bottom after day three. All the coil assemblies are off now, and we're basically just left with the lamp boards and the wiring harness, really. There's not, uh, not too much else there. And then top side, still, uh, still all the posts and everything on the top side, but mainly everything is off. And now you can really start to see, unfortunately, how bad this play field is. <clears throat> this is not a diamond plate play field. This is just your regular lacquer uh, top coated play field, old style. Uh, so there is a lot of wear on the lacquer, uh, but you know, it is what it is. We'll fix it up best we can, and it will look good in the end. So that's day three. Uh, table's getting a little more packed. So here's the table after day three. And then uh, I need to reorganize that because I'm quickly running out of room. So all the ball guides are over there. There's uh, quite a few ball guides on this game. <clears throat> All right, so I'm just gonna pack up for the night and uh, we'll see if we can get anything done tomorrow. All right, <clears throat> so it's uh, day four of stripping the play field. Uh, another night after work, so I don't know how much I'll get done. Uh, but I think by the end of the week, uh, I should have the play field completely stripped and we'll try to get this video done for the weekend. Uh, today is uh, Thursday now. I started on uh, late Sunday, I believe. Uh, so let's uh, see what we get done. I'm going to start here by removing everything that's on connectors. So we got the lamp boards left, uh, this relay, the uh, high voltage board for the magnet, and maybe a couple other things, but that'll be it on the back. And then we'll get it back on the rotisserie and we'll take the rest of the posts off. All right, so I have everything unbolted from the bottom that is on a connector or can be removed. Uh, everything else is soldered to the harness, so we're just going to take the harness off all in one piece, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, but first, we need to get the uh, all the posts off the top. So that's what we're going to work on now. And uh, the whole time I am removing stuff, I am making notes of anything that is broken or anything that needs to be replaced, like all the coil sleeves and stuff like that. Uh, I'm writing them down, and then as I have spare time, like in the evening or whenever, I am finding that part in the manual, and I am writing down the part number for that specific part so that I can easily find it on Pinball Life or Marco uh, or wherever I'm going to end up doing the order. Uh, and eventually, by the time I have everything apart and have gone through all the assemblies, I'll have my final parts list of what I need to order, and then we'll do that order. All right, so let me get going on uh, getting these posts off, and uh, then I'll come back. All right, I've been taking pictures all along, of course, but right now I'm going to be very meticulous in taking pictures of all these posts so I know exactly where the, uh, the posts go. So I'm just going to take pictures of all the different sections of posts, make sure I don't miss anything. Here's a little tool tip for these posts that are uh, used a lot for like the uh, center post between the flippers. Um, a regular deep socket, it's quarter inch, and a regular quarter inch socket doesn't go in uh, because of the size of this. You can't get a socket on it. So you're stuck using like, what I used to use is like a quarter inch open end wrench to be able to get this post out. So what I bought is this WIA quarter by 125. It's part number WIA number 341, and it's a deep quarter inch socket. 
and the post goes right in and it works real good. So these WIA tools, they're a little expensive, but this one's well worth getting. Once again, quarter inch WIA, part number 341, works really good for these posts that are used for the center post, and they're also used in various other spots on a lot of games. All right, so now we pretty much have everything off the top side. The targets, I'm just gonna leave them on the wiring harness so they'll drop out when I do the harness. And then we just have the ball guides and pretty much it. So the only thing I got left that I want to do today is these uh, the rollover micro switches. Let me zoom in a little bit here. So I want to very carefully document these rollover micro switches like this one here uh, for two reasons. One, I want to make sure I take good pictures of where the rollover switch is and the wire color. And then I want to make written notes of where the rollover switches are and what kind of, uh, you know, metal tab they have on them and document the wiring uh, for two reasons. One, I don't want to accidentally switch an out lane for an in lane when I put these together. And the second reason is I'm going to have to desolder all these. Uh, one connection is soldered. The other connection is a, a, a push on spade connector. But I need to remove all these because when, uh, when I wash the wiring harness, you can't wash these little micro switches. Uh, water will get trapped inside these little micro switches and cause all kinds of problems down the road. Uh, so before we wash this wiring harness, we're going to need to take all these micro switches off. So I'm just going to carefully uh, document with pictures and with my write-in on the clipboard uh, where all these rollover switches go and what, what wires are on them. Uh, and that's all I'm going to do for the night. Uh, tomorrow we will get this whole wiring harness off the play field. So that'll be tomorrow, day five. But that's it for today, day four. All right, it is day number five. And we are going to finish stripping this play field today. Uh, so the main goal is to get the wiring harness off, get it removed from the play field, get it moved to somewhere else where it's safe. And then later we'll work on getting this wire and harness all cleaned up. So I'm going to take really good pictures. Uh, I documented where all my rollover switch wires go. So we're going to be unsoldering all of those. Uh, but for now, let's start by getting all the bolts out. Anything that holds the wire and harness in, all the light bulb sockets, all those bolts need to come off. So let's get started with that. There's quite a few screws to take off, so it's going to take a little while. Uh, but that's what we're going to do right now. Alright, got all the screws out. It was quite a lot of screws as you can see wouldn't want to do that with a hand screwdriver. And now we have everything unbolted except the rollover switches. We're going to leave the rollover switches on the play field when we pull the, uh, the wiring harness off. So we're going to unsolder uh, these and take the spades off. But before I did that, other than taking a lot of pictures, I uh, made this little road map of all the switches and where all the wires go to so it'll be nice and easy to uh, figure out where all the wires have to be resoldered onto the rollover switches when we put it back together so let's get going on uh, undoing all those connections on those rollover switches and then we'll be ready to pull the harness all right so i got all the uh, rollovers unsoldered so the rollovers are still bolted to the play field, but all the wiring is disconnected. So we should, in theory, be ready to remove the wiring harness now. So how I do this is I have this piece of uh, thin plywood. It's a quarter inch plywood, I think. It's the same size as the play field. So I put that next to the play field. We'll put a towel on that. And what we're gonna do is pick up the play field, uh, the wiring harness off the play field and move it onto this piece of plywood with the towel on it. So hopefully everything's unbolted. 
and this will go fairly easy. Oh, got a couple. I forgot the uh, forgot the GI wires on the uh, on the pop bumpers here. We'll just cut those off. Kind of lay it out, make sure nothing's getting, uh, make sure everything's laying flat. None of the switches are getting bent. All right, so now we can throw another towel on top of this and set it off to the side for now. And we can deal with cleaning all this up at a later stage. All right, so now I'm going to unbolt all the rollovers. Gonna unbolt all the rollovers and just pop them up like this. All right, so now that I have them all out and popped up like that, uh, I'll just take a picture of them and then I'll know which kind of bracket and switch goes in which spot. It looks like they're all pretty much the same except for the shooter lane one. Uh, but just in case, we'll get a picture of that and a picture of whatever's left on the play field that you know, we couldn't see when the wiring harness was on here. All right, so bottom of the play field is depopulated. Top of the play field is depopulated. Uh, we still got the metal rails to take out and deal with the side rails. And you can see how severely dirty this play field is. Uh, but that was five days working uh, pretty much after work, so only a couple hours each day. And a lot of the time was, you know, taking pictures of the play field, documenting all the wiring. Uh, so it, you know, it seems like it took a while, but a lot of it was the documentation. It's very important to document everything. Uh, so that'll do it for this video. This is part seven of Roller Games. In part number eight, we're going to start with mylar removal. Uh, there's one big piece of mylar on this game right here above the pop bumpers. Um, and that's it. Unfortunately, this game didn't have the Mylar down here. Uh, at least not when I got the game. It looks like it did have Mylar at one time. Uh, but I will show you how I remove Mylar. We will do the initial cleaning on this play field in the next video. Uh, and it'll be a bunch of clean, clean, clean. Uh, and we'll see what we end up with with this play field and how much work we're going to have to do doing touch-ups and stuff like that. All right, so let's uh, go wrap up this episode, and I actually have a viewer mail to read, and uh, that'll we'll finish up this uh, episode seven of Roller Games. All right, so that's going to do it for uh, Roller Games Restoration Update, episode number seven. Got the playfield completely stripped of pretty much all its components. Uh, so starting on next episode of Roller Games uh, Restoration Update number eight, we will be removing mylar cleaning the play field, getting the ball swirls out of the play field with magic eraser and alcohol, and doing a full assessment of what we're going to need to do for touch-up, uh, possible water slide decals for insert damage and stuff like that. Uh, so that'll be next episode. So make sure to check that out coming uh, probably in a couple weeks. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I did get the uh, Great Plains order for Stern Stingray came. That's this big box. Here is all those electrical components we ordered for Stern Stingray. It just came in the other day. Be going through that pretty soon. Uh, so I did get a viewer mail this week. If you'd like to send the viewer mail, you have a question or a comment you'd like me to read on the air, send an email to fierodug at gmail.com. Make sure to put viewer mail in the subject line. 
Uh, there's more info on doing that down below in the description for this video. So I printed this one out. So uh, to Tomas, I believe it is. Uh, we say Thomas in America. Uh, might be Tomas from Sweden is restoring a Williams Roller Games. How cool is that? And he wrote, uh, I wrote to you on YouTube a while ago in uh, episode one of Roller Games. I'm liking your renovation of your Williams Roller Games. I have a problem I hope you can help me with. I've started to reassemble the cabinet and saw that on the EMI filter, uh, there's a component with burn damage. See picture. So I'll put the picture up on the screen right now. Uh, and if you look at the uh, picture, uh, we're looking at the power box where the power line comes in. Uh, and in the middle there is the EMI filter. And above that is a little uh, round flat disc. Look, kind of looks like a capacitor. It is burned to a crisp on his power box. Uh, so what that is, is a, uh, a metal oxide varistor, uh, MOV for short. Uh, and what that is, is a one-time use surge protector is basically what that is. So if you have your game plugged into a wall and you have a lightning strike or some kind of power surge to the power in your house, uh, it will pop that little capacitor disc looking thing and it will, you know, just burn it up so it's open. And that prevents any other damage further down the line on the pinball machine. Uh, so nowadays, normally in your house, you'll have your game plugged into a surge protector. And that surge protector will protect anything that's plugged into that uh, surge protector from getting those uh, power surges. Uh, but this was the way for the pinball machines to prevent any further damage in the, in the, in the system by putting this uh, varistor in the system. So what Tomas needs to order is a, uh, is a new metal oxide varistor for his game. And since he's over in Sweden, he's running on 240 volts. So he wants to use a 275 volt varistor. I'll throw a uh, link to the Great Plains uh, on the screen here. Great Plains Electronics sells a 275 volt varistor that'll work for his game. Over here in America, uh, that metal oxide varistor will typically be somewhere between 100 and 130 volts since we're running 120 volt power here in America. Uh, check your manual to see what uh, voltage that varistor is. Uh, but once again, that is a metal oxide varistor and we call it an MO, MOV or a MOV for short. Uh, so to continue with his email here, uh, he says, I've searched the manual, cannot find anything about this. Uh, I'm new in this area, so I'll be happy for your help. So hopefully this uh, helped you. Uh, I live in Sweden. We have 240 volts in the wall, thinking it might be cool to tell you that. Uh, if I don't have it wrong, I think you're lower voltage where you live. We're in America. We have 120 volts. Over there, they have 240 volts. Uh, while, while I am still asking you, would you be able to send a link from where you get your cap kit to the power supply? Uh, so uh, I get all my electronics from Great Plains Electronics. Uh, he sells all the kits. A lot of times you'll notice that he doesn't have the kits in stock. Um, now you can email him about the kits and he may be able to put a kit together for you. Uh, the other option is if he doesn't have the kits in stock, uh, he lists all the parts that are in that kit. And if you search the website for all those uh different capacitors. He almost always has all those capacitors in stock. He might just not have a kit pre-ready. Uh, so you can just order all those capacitors and make your own kit. Uh, but greatplainselectronics.com is where I've always gotten all my pinball parts. That's where this big box for Stingray came from. Uh, he's a great asset to the pinball community and I highly recommend checking out his site. Uh, so just to finish up his email, look fo looking forward to the next episode. Uh, take care of yourself. Sincerely, Tomas. So thank you, Tomas, for sending me a viewer mail. I hope uh, my answer to your question helped you out. And once again, if you have a question or a comment you would like me to read on the air, please send me a viewer, viewer mail to fierodug at gmail.com. Make sure to put viewer mail in the subject line so I make sure to see it and I can print it out and read it in the, on the air on the next episode. Uh, so that'll do it. I want to thank you for watching my vintage pinball. I hope you enjoyed this episode, uh, episode 7 of Williams Roller Games Restoration. I hope you learned something about stripping down your playfield. 
uh, and I hope you tune in for the next episode. So that'll do it. I'm Pin Dude. This is my vintage pinball. Thank you for watching. Please hit, uh, give this video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you uh, haven't subscribed. And I will see you next time.